Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw a breakout above the 28 to 30 resistance from yesterday. And uh, from there, ES tested the 37 half to 39 half zone where we got responsive sellers on first test. Now, at this point, heading into the open, we know that on the smaller time frames, the buyers are in firm control. The larger time frame bias continues to be bearish. Uh, the challenge for today is that much of the range has already been played out. So with the overnight low being at 18.99 and the market already tagging 37.5, we've already put in a pretty decent range heading into the open, uh, which could make it a little bit more difficult to find good opportunities. And it can also limit the upside to perhaps um, the 49 to 51 area. And that would be a range extreme. It doesn't mean that we necessarily have to get there. Uh, you know, the 37.5 to 39.5 is resistance until broken, but in the event of uh, strong buying, where the market was holding above the 28.5 to 30.5 zone, which is the most aggressive uh, support at this point, it's broken resistance essentially, acting as support. If the market were to hold above 28.5 to 30.5 and then just continue going up on strong momentum, then 49 to 51. And that 53 quarter would mark a exhaustion point and a range extreme, and that could limit uh, the upside. So there's still decent upside potential as long as we get sustained upside momentum, and uh, you know we're getting broad market strength. But like I said, you know the challenge with it is just that the range potential is questionable from here on out. Um, at the same time. I think that uh, you know the other markets are probably going to tag some decent resistance here soon as well, and uh, that can also play into it and um, you know just attract more selling into the market as the market goes higher because that bigger picture bias is still bearish. So you know on the smaller time frames, uh, we're getting this bounce off of a deeply oversold condition, and you know the market can go a bit higher as it resolves that condition but uh, the bigger picture bias is still pretty bearish and for that reason um, anytime there is a uh, short-term recovery attempt we can get profit taking at the resistance areas and uh, especially those larger time frame resistance zones can attract sellers and we can get rejection on first test and then the market can consolidate a bit before really resolving uh, this big range. So on the downside, 28 half to 30 half is the most aggressive uh, area of support. And uh, like I said, we would have to see sustained upside momentum in order to uh, consider actually trading that zone. Uh, the more conservative areas to trade are lower at 22 half to 24 half, the 20 support, and um, finally 13 half to 15 half. Now, ideally, you want to see the market holding above the 13 half to 15 half area that's kind of worst case scenario the ideal condition would be that the market holds above initial support above 1920 and then we actually resume this uh, smaller time frame uptrend and continue going higher so in the event that we get a pullback off the open into the initial support zone into 20 uh, that would be a good spot to look for a long setup. The only time that you would want to avoid going long at uh, one of those areas is if we're getting a lot of uh, sustained downside momentum and very heavy downside momentum, uh, which would uh, signal a failed breakout attempt. In that case, perhaps, uh, you know, be more cautious. Uh, but, you know, that is an area, the 22 half to 24 half and 20, where responsive buyers can be active. Um, on the upside, above 37.5 to 39.5, we have some resistance at 42.75 to 44 quarter, and then finally, uh, that range extreme ID at 49 to 51 and 53 quarter. Uh, we have larger time frame resistance, 58.5 to 60.5, and uh, and finally 64 quarter, 66 quarter. But that's uh, you know quite far away, and it's unlikely that uh, you know the market will actually retrace that much. Uh, the more likely scenario is that. Uh, as the market attempts this breakout, responsive sellers are active at the resistance zones, and we get more of a uh, kind of a zigzag type move where 
uh, you know, the market hits resistance, pulls back, um, takes some time to break to the next zone, hits the decent resistance again, pulls back, and consolidates, um, you know. So even though the short-term direction may be pointing to the upside, um, it doesn't have to go up in a straight line from this point on because it is quite exhausted. So at this point, even if we're going to go up and test that 49 to 51, it's probably going to be in a more zigzag fashion where sellers are active, there's some struggle, then finally it breaks out, hits the next zone, pulls back again, and uh, you know kind of consolidates along the way. So that's the type of context that we're looking at right now. Um, again, initial support, 13 half to 15 half, those are good spots to uh, consider long setups. And uh, on the upside, we can still consider short setups as well at uh, the key resistance areas. So those are the main thoughts heading into the open. Let's see if the buy side can maintain the control that we've seen in the overnight session, and we'll take it from there.